Thank you, David. We will talk about later about the tension between uh, social class, fraud, business, dictatorship, and Jewish uh, identity. Our next speaker is uh, Adrian Krupnik from uh, Tel Aviv University. And I can say many things about him, but the most important, I think, is that he submitted his PhD dissertation on Sunday. So congratulations. I think this is a, a great uh, way to celebrate. Okay, so please. David, I think you should move oh, a bit. Okay. Thank you. Twenty minutes. Yes, I will put the. Twenty-two, like David. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation. Uh, I hope to to give you, to offer you a presentation uh, of the same quality of uh, those that we enjoyed before. I will start uh, talking about the military rule and uh, giving uh, some uh, concepts that uh, I, I consider necessary to understand my presentation. Military rule is uh, one word, one concept that, that we usually use in Argentina and, and abroad, but uh, we also can refer to a dictatorship. And the term that I would like to introduce to, to, to put the framework for my presentation is the Proceso de Reorganización Nacional. This was the name used by the militars themselves to maybe as an euphemism instead of talking about dictatorship or something like this. But I think even though it was their own conceptualization, it is very, very useful to understand what was going on in Argentina. So in a nutshell, because I, I, I will not present about this, but it's necessary to, to understand our conversation, I would like to say that the the elites in Argentina, they found that uh, they had uh, problems to exercise political hegemony in Argentina. And they wanted to finish that problem. So to finish so social resistance to their policies, to their attempts to reform the, the economical structure of society and to, to reestablish political hegemony, they uh, they found that their main, their main obstacle was the, the social structure itself, that it, it was based on um, an economy, market, ma in, uh, domestic oriented, uh, and based on industry. The industry had workers, organized workers, uh, many of them um, voting the Peronism um, in the past, and they had sons, their sons were going to universities, they were uh, receiving education. So it was a very, uh, a very difficult society to, to manage according to what the elite wanted to do. So they wanted to suppress that structure. For doing that, they used the repression, legal and illegal, human rights violations. I, I, I am very glad about uh, David's presentation because it uh, the connection is very, very useful. And they also had an economic plan. This person, is, he was the Ministry of Economy, Jose Alfredo Martinez de Oz, and the plan was to open the economy for imports of goods. So the production in Argentina was going to be severely damaged. And uh, also to, to give preeminence to the financial sectors. Uh, indebtedness and many things that uh, it was useful for them to weaken the, um, the workers' union and the sectors of the society that had resisted in the past all attempts of uh, reforms. So now I want to start talking about migration to Israel, Jewish Argentine migration to Israel from Argentina and they return to Argentina. First of all, I want to give this historical perspective, uh, and I would like you to guess for, for your own, uh, not, uh, 
not allowed, but a uh, few seconds, try to imagine where, if we have the numbers of migrants from Argentina to Israel along the years, where do you imagine that the dictatorship or the Proceso de Reorganización Nacional years are in this graph? So take two seconds, maybe is uh, enough. And now you see that the years of the military rule are not like overwhelmingly uh, characterized by migration to Israel. We had uh, periods before of uh, economic uh, instability or political crisis, before and after that are much larger. So this is the first, uh, the first approach that I would like to share with you. Now, if we focus uh, inside the, the years of the dictatorship or the Proceso de Reorganización Nacional, we see that the years 76 and 77 are those that present an increase, an increasing trend. And um, I would like to, to share with you my opinions about why it happened, opinions based on evidence. And um, so, there are, of course, concomitant causes for that. Social sciences is not uh, only one cause. We have uh, to, to, to be open to, to partial explanations and things that we can uh, find uh, evidence and some others that we can guess. But it is clear that state terrorism during the first years of the new regime was a clear motivation. It, it is, um, there, are, uh, there were 350 people that received special help from Israel to come here. Uh, some of them were imprisoned, legally imprisoned. Some others uh, were in, in, in different kinds of uh, shelters. But um, there is a message, for example, from the, the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires that says, using the Zionist uh, terminology for immigration, aliyah, that means ascension, aliyah during the past year was a consequence of the situation regarding security. Many among the olim, among the, emigra the, the immigrants, found in Israel a shelter country, and their connection to Judaism and to Israel to the Israeli nation is questionable. This is a message from the ambassador in Argentina. And uh, I am not telling that all the immigrants during that year were people escaping the illegal repression, but they were a noticeable portion among them. Now, uh, this was not the only cause, but in, in the next year, in 77, I found that uh, there were three causes acting together. State terrorism continued, but we also have uh, uh, economic, economic causes. This message is from the Jewish Agency Emissary in Cordoba. Uh, the Jewish Agency, for those that are not familiar, it used to be the proto-state before the existence, before the creation of Israel. Now it is an NGO and works under the regulation of the Israeli state for mainly to bring Jews from all over the world to Israel. And this message, the person says that uh, in later times, they are receiving in the office young couples that uh, are, having, are, are, are finding difficult to have the same uh, status, economic status, that they, they, their parents used to have in their homes because inflation is destroying the economy, the shopkeepers, he says that most of the Jewish community in Cordoba were shopkeepers. They, all, they always have uh, partial views. But anyway, this quotation is useful. The economic plan that I mentioned before uh, was destroying sectors of the economy, those market uh, domestic-oriented, the producers, the shopkeepers. They were suffering, and they were also among the immigrants to Israel. And also, and this is in connection with David's uh, presentation, there was the idea that, uh, not the idea, there was anti-Semitism. The discussion was 
what kind of anti-Semitism uh, among Jewish leadership in Israel, in the United States, and in Argentina, the discussion was, was anti-Semitism official or not official? In the United States, it was less important. Like, uh, the, after, the Timmerman, after the Timmerman affair, um, the American Jewish community, the American Jewish uh, committee uh, a, a office in Buenos Aires was closed because uh, the representative, Jacobo Timmerman, was threatened and he, Jacobo Kovadlov, I'm sorry, Jacobo Kovadlov, um, he was threatened and uh, he left the country. They closed the office. So, and, and then, very, very close in time, Marcos Resnitsky, the son of uh, Nehemias Resnitsky, who was the president or secretary of DAIA, DAIA was the political umbrella organization of the Jewish community, he was kidnapped illegally and uh, he, he was liberated uh, one week later and he came to Israel. By the way, he and his sister were among those that returned to Argentina and he, he, his sister returned during the dictatorship. So return did not stop uh, during this period of time. But what I wanted to say with this incident is that not to talk about uh, the tens of uh, hundreds of disappeared people uh, from uh, Jewish origin that were among the tens of thousands that uh, were disappeared in Argentina. This kind of incident w uh, provided the material to, for this idea of anti-Semitism in Argentina, either officially or not. So I found that part of the increase in immigration was caused by this. Um, well, now uh, I, 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 I already said that return never stopped along the dictatorship. We could have the idea that uh, those that um, left the country under dictatorship were not going to return, but this is not the case. Uh, this table presents uh, the Latin Americans' rate uh, of uh, leaving Israel after one, two, three, four, and five years after their arrival in the country. I want to, to make clear that even though it talks about Latin Americans, um, more than half of them were from Argentina. So I am sure that the tendency is not going to be um, distorted by, by that fact. And it is the, the available information, so I don't have a, a, the one related only, exclusively to Argentines. And if we focus on the years about the, um, uh, related to the military dictatorship in Argentina, for example, we found that those that left Argentina in 73, when Perón returned to the country, and before, supposedly before uh, the Yom Kippur War in Israel, 25% left Israel in 1978. Bye, bye, bye of course. Thank you, Ranan. And I am, not, I, I am not in the position to say that all of them returned to Argentina. They left Israel. Probably some of them went to Europe or other places, but my, my, in my view, most of them returned to Argentina because uh, this, uh, they, they, most of them have uh, no passports and uh, they, they left Argentina not as refugees because of, the, um, because of the, the date, so it was difficult to go to other places. But if we focus on those that left Argentina during the years of the dictatorship, also the rate of return, even by the, 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 left, the rate of leaving Israel, is um, considerable by the first year. And I can tell you that I, I have similar information related to the 90s, and the rates are not different. The rates are not different in the 90s. And um, also I want to, to emphasize that uh, the stories of those that returned were very different. Because I want to make this clear because I am providing figures 
but under the figures we have people and uh, I just would like to mention that some people, even those that were escaping the illegal repression, some of them went back to fight again in the guerrilla and were assassinated in the Operativo Contraofensiva Montonera and others. I had an interview with the psychologist that uh, had the opportunity to talk to them and many of them felt guilty about their friends and they went back. They did not want to be here and they wanted to go back and fight for their country, their ideas, their friends. Some others just went back to study at the university with the professors they wanted. They preferred uh, psychology at the University of Buenos Aires and not in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Some others went back because of the family and so on and so forth. Um, well, uh, now I am moving close, uh, very close to the end, but I am in 15 minutes. I am taking, I am taking, okay, okay. Um, okay, in 1977, uh, there was a visit of Jewish Argentine leaders in Israel. Uh, they, their names are here, Nehemiah Resnitsky, the Rabbi Ben Amu, Rabbi Marshall Mayer, and the president, uh, Jaime Barilco, a philosopher and director of education for the community, and uh, the president of the so sports clubs in Argentina. At the end, uh, we, we see that the, the, the so-called Jewish leaders are uh, people that they have their job, they are in the sport club, uh, and all of them uh, have different agendas. And Menachem Begin, the prime minister, he also has his own agenda. So the, the meeting was in August uh, 1977. While they are having a conversation here, people are being kidnapped in Argentina. I took care about uh, checking for the dates and maybe seven Jewish Argentine were kidnapped uh, during the two days they were, uh, they were having conversations. And uh, there were differences uh, in, in their agendas. Uh, the, they were toured around the absorption centers for immigrants and the idea of uh, Begin was to convince them about uh, making a campaign and, and in fact they are going to organize a special committee to promote immigration to Israel as the solution for the problems of the Jewish Argentine community. But the difference were that they had different views about antisemitism. To Begin, I, Begin was like, I don't care what kind of antisemitism are you talking about, but it is dangerous, come here. It is uh, really, I, I don't even want to, to listen to this kind of discussion. And he really believed that uh, the Jews in Argentina were in danger. And he did not believe that they were free to leave the country. He was sure that the difficulties to sell properties and the regulation to move money across the banking system was a kind of uh, manner to regulate the, um, the exit of people. And uh, okay, anti-Semitism, migration, the, the Jewish leaders, they, they wanted to continue with their institutions. They don't want to migrate and they don't really believe that the Jewish Argentines were uh, ready to go to Israel. People wanted to continue their lives in Argentina. And money, very important, money. They raised the, the issue during the meeting. There, there were two meetings. Uh, in the first and the second, they raised the issue about collecting money in Argentina. They said, well, maybe we are moving close to, a, to an economic crisis. It would be good for us if our money collecting we do in the name of the Jewish community for local issues. And just in case, you know. But uh, Begin and the Israelis, they said, no, no, let's continue doing the money uh, collecting for Israel in the name of Zionism, the, the, um, the, okay, I forgot the name of the campaign, Keren, Keren Ayesod, Keren Ayesod, and uh, we cannot change that. But there was a discussion about money. And, um, okay, now, was that committee successful? They opened, they created programs, they, they made a, a lot of things on the paper and in reality they, they created here uh, programs to, to receive at least, they thought, 
3,000 or 5,000 Argentines the next year. That, that means 1978. So what, what do you think? Did they succeed or not? Well, uh, 1978 was the World Cup uh, year in Argentina. The issue of human rights was being made, uh, was being made public, uh, in this case from France, but uh, it, was, it was something no one could deny at that time. This just to give you some context. And if you say, if you see, you saw this before, but 78 already the number of immigrants from Argentina started to decrease. So those who were willing or ready to leave Argentina for Israel already have done it before. So some uh, last, uh, last remarks, the increase in the number of migrants was moderate during the military rule. The Israeli policies, like this committee, were not uh, effective. Yeah, in, in, it's like leaders cannot change social reality. The force of reality is uh, stronger than them. And um, they had different views about anti-Semitism and about the interest of the Jewish Argentine community and the interest of Israel. And return migration did not stop. And actually is similar to the 90s or some other periods of times. Thank you very much.